I'm Simone Arabia. This is Fever Peace. And this is Beats, Sneaks, and, and Rhymes. rhymes. Uh, this is a show where we will discuss all aspects of hip hop culture, past, present, and future. Our first segment is the Beats segment. In this segment, we pick an album and we discuss it. That's right. And so this week we've chosen The All by Smith and Wesson. Yes. Give it up, give it up. Give it up, give it up, Smith and Wesson. How long in the game? Oh man, they've been in the game since '95. <laughs> Salute so to that. Yeah, um, it's their seventh studio album, uh -huh. produced by North Wonder and the Soul Council, um, and I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, it's a mature album. Mm -hmm. Yes, it um, is. It has a certain kind of vibe to it. Yep. Uh, I listened to it uh, quite a few times and, and I enjoyed it. Uh, how many uh, songs on there? It's 12 songs. It's about 42, 43 minutes, I think. Okay. So yeah. it goes quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd you like it? I like it a lot. I, I dig it. Um, I think it's a solid album. Um, I feel like they work really well together, um, as usual. It's not like they've never worked well together mm. but um this is a more mature smith and wesson and um i like what they're saying and I, I i dug it i dug the vibe yeah me also um to me you know listening to it um it missed something just a a certain tempo or element from smith and wesson that i'm used to but with this being their seventh album i can understand why yeah you know um but you know overall I believe it, it's it was done very well by Knife Wonder. Um, yes, I like and, the beats. And he, and he got quite a few uh, special guests on there, like Rick Ross, Raekwon, mm -hmm. Rhapsody, Rhapsody, if one of your favorites. Yes, Music Soul Child. That song is a good song. It's a standout song for me. Wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about it, um, but it worked really well. Um, hearing a grown Smith and Wesson. Uh, ha have a love type song but still in a very Smith and Wesson kind of way it was good and you know I think Music Soul Child and um, Rhapsody they you know definitely elevated the song so that's that's definitely a standout track for me okay um I don't know if I had a, have a standout track yet but I was definitely feeling it's like a uh, well, there's a couple songs on there that seem a little personal, mm -hmm. but I think it was one that was called The Letter. A Letter for You, yeah. A Letter for You, okay. Yeah, I think I, I, I kind of dug that one. Um, coming from them, you know what I'm saying? I'm used to the whole Bucktown and, yes. you know what I'm saying, strap up and mm -hmm. lace your boots up, you know what I mean? But Tech and Steel, you know, they did their thing. They did. And um, they should be proud. Yes. It's a good, it's a good body of work. Salute to them. Salute to them. All right, so guys, we've moved on to our next segment, which is the sneaks segment. This is where we discuss kicks in all aspects. Uh, kicks, uh, sneakers, um, yeah, depending on where you are geographically, tennis shoes, depending on where you are age-wise, shoes. Uh, but we are here to talk about sneakers. We need to do a segment on where the term tennis shoes came from that's definitely what we're going to do at and some point and why does it still exist if you guys know where the word uh the phrase tennis shoe came from and why it's applied to all sneakers or kicks <laughs> let us know yeah, we gotta let us know sneakers Please. too <laughs> right where did the term sneaker ah uh, anyhow we have a lot of research to do <laughs> i thought i was done with school but all right so uh my sneaker of choice today is my uptempos um I chose these for two particular reasons. One, because they're dope. Um, you see how they kind of match my shirt. Thank you. Oh. Boop, boop, boop. Um, and number two, because they're comfortable. I am in the age bracket in which I prefer comfort. I demand it, actually. And the fact that I get style and comfort with these particular uptempos makes me a happy chick. So They're Mitch Match. Right. Oh, that's the other thing. So when I wear these, people think that these are custom made because the shoes are so different. 
But I, when I tell them, no, I went to the mall and they were purchased at the mall, they look at me like, really? I've never seen them before. It makes me very happy again. I remember when these were um, out back in the day. Mm -hmm. Of course, not this particular colorway or style. But I remember when these came back out, came out, uh, it was like 95, mm -hmm. 96, 96, something like that, yeah. And, um, and I didn't like them. <laughs> Um, I didn't like the air. I thought it was like really like uh, corny, bulky. I think it was really too loud of Nike to put air like across. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? But um, I started to dig them more mm -hmm. in, in in a more modern time. Um, not mm -hmm. all of the colorways. I'm definitely feeling these. Yes. Just because you know they're different, and I, I like the I like those colors. But uh. It's a couple colorways where I still don't feel where the air stands out too much. I just mm -hmm. think, you know, it's it's a little too loud. But those are dope. They are. Nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, we got here. I have, uh, in honor of Air Max month being in March, March 26th, I have the Air Max 1 here. This is the first Air Max that uh, Tinker Hatfield made. And um, this was the introduction to... The visual, uh, what do they call it? We call it a bubble. Right. But they actually call it like, um, they call it a, they call it the visible max air. Excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the air max, the, I have a couple pair of these. This is only two colorways that I have. I think the red and the white and the blue and the white is, is the original colorways. Yeah. Um, when they first dropped back in like uh, 85, 86, mm. 87. 87. Um, mm. Yeah, I remember when this, if you was a kid growing up in the 80s. Um, this was a big deal. This was a big deal. Yeah. Like when you, when, when it was the. was a totally different look. When the, when the, the, when the bubble moved. first came out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was totally a big deal. And these two are comfortable. That is why I have about five. <laughs> pair of these mm -hmm. um, because they are comfortable yep they and are. they're dope and they're dope mm -hmm. therefore forever be in style yeah god damn it I didn't put lemon in my water <laughs> this is definitely be on the booth real okay he's so dumb all right, guys, so this is our next segment, which we call the Dwayne, Roger, and Rerun section. What's happening? So, <laughs> in the news this morning, uh, actresses Lori Laughlin from Full House, the original Full House, and I think she's on Fuller House as well, and Felicity Huffman, uh, among they were among 40 charged in college entrance exam cheating plots, right? <laughs> <laughs> Steal my education. The reason why I chose this topic is because, first of all, the FBI got involved, right? The FBI got involved in the situation, um, which is just, just crazy to me that, you know, these two uh, very well-known white actresses um, were involved in, a, in, a, in this ridiculous scheme plot to uh, get college students to cheat you know somehow to uh, circumvent the system to get into these prestigious um ivy league and very high caliber colleges like ucla um stanford georgetown wake forest these are really top schools mm. and so the fact that the fbi got these uh these people on tape they got them uh recorded phone calls involving these celebrities and um uh and a cooperating witness and I'm just like, well, what's going to happen to them? Because I remember a couple years ago, there was a bunch of teachers in Atlanta okay. who also were involved in uh, some sort of cheating scandal. Okay. <laughs> and they were not, not only did they lose their jobs, they were arrested. Mm. So, so when you stretch Atlanta, do you mean that they were black? Yes, that's, that's exactly what I mean. Okay. I mean that they were black. Okay. <laughs> These teachers were black. And... I'm not suggesting that they didn't do anything wrong to the point where they should have been arrested or, or whatever, right? Because there are a lot of people, a lot of parents, a lot of students who 
basically were cheated out of getting into college. These people who did the right thing and they used the proper channels and they took the exams and they went by the rules mm -hmm. and you know they allowed these other students however they did it to circumvent the system for their own benefit so mm -hmm. um you know whether or not you know they should do like hard time for it or whatever but at least as administrators should they have lost their jobs exactly now of course this is different because we have actresses as opposed to school administrators but come on uh i understand but i'm a little bit ignorant to the fact of what's going on here but so this goes as far as because they're actors and actresses um they have sort of like uh an agent that gets them into college mm -hmm. so with this scam right here this is through someone who is who i'm assuming yeah they work through someone to get their child in college mm -hmm. and he does bribes and or whatever it, whatever it takes yeah I mean, get, the details are still, it, it, like, it literally just broke news this morning. So this would extend to, I'm sorry, yeah. this would extend to all, each and every one of those schools. Yeah. I would, I would, I would think you, so. You understand? Yes. It's not just like, yeah. um, it's yeah. It's not just, yeah, because, you know, I get, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So listen to what it says, right? It says the alleged scheme focused on getting students admitted to elite universities as recruited athletes, regardless of their athletic abilities. So let's just stop right there. <laughs> right? They focused on getting students admitted to elite universities as recruited athletes. Despite whether or not they're athletes they're at all. Athletes. So that's a just to that's get, a red flag just right there. Just to get there. you on the list. Just to get you on the list so you can get into the school based off of some you know, and we're talking athletic abilities, so we're talking athletic scholarships. We're yes. talking yeah. perks, we're talking all of those other things. Yeah. Um and helping potential students cheat on their college exams, according to the indictment unsealed in Boston. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So, I'm interested to again, see this that's, story that's unfold. Yale, Georgetown, Stanford, mm -hmm. UCLA, UCLA, University of Texas, Texas. Wake Forest. These are, these are big schools, yeah. right? These are big schools. And so, I'm interested to see how this story unfolds. Um, number one, because the, because the FBI is involved and they tend to be less um, lenient than state officials. Um, and the fact that the FBI is involved and then we have these well-known actresses that are attached to this daggone scandal. Um, I want to see what's going to happen to them. I want to see what's going to happen uh, to the schools. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, what about the kids? You know, at a lower level of getting your child, you know, you have this uh, academically star child, and it's you, the parent, when it comes down to a certain demographic or mm -hmm. certain, um, how would you say? Anyhow. Right. Yeah. There's certain, a, cer a certain... A certain demographic. A certain demographic. <laughs> We're going to keep it right there. A certain demographic. You know, we, we, we connect with these colleges. Mm -hmm. We the parents have to talk to these people. Yes. We can't afford yes. an agent. We can talk through social workers and stuff like that. Right. At you know, or coaches, guidance counselors, guidance counselors yes. like that. But um, you know this is experts a that's paid to, you know, to yeah. get your child into Yeah. And they're not they don't they have money to not even use the regular channels of a guidance counselor or yeah. a coach or a teacher. They can hire someone who deals mm -hmm. with this type of stuff to yeah. there are people out there who are hired to specifically get children into schools. If, and and, and if you're shopping around a a prize child, then it's okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you're shopping around a, a C D this child has a seventy percent <laughs> a C D grip uh, free throw <laughs> shot, then yes. But uh if your child can't dribble a ball through his legs, yeah, and, and uh, you got a scholarship for wrestling, that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going there, but yes, that is a good point. So I'm def I, I definitely want to see where this is going. Um, uh, if you guys have any comments about that, please uh, don't forget to click the subscription box below and just hit us up in the comments. Talk to us. Let us know how you feel about that. Yes, yeah, subscribe. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Okay. Alright guys, we're back. And this is our final segment, which is the rhyme segment. 
And this is where we choose a song, a verse, bars. We just choose bars, right? We choose bars. 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 And we discuss said bars. Yeah, those bars. Those bars. Um, And so this week... We chose uh, Mm. Still Waiting on You. Or Still Waiting by Royster59 featuring Nick Grant Mm -hmm. and Elzai. And this is off of what? Uh, this is off of the Barzan Four, which actually dropped in 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, let's make it known that whatever song that we choose or whatever bars that is, there is no time on there. It could be uh, present Old bars, present past, bars. You know, mm-hmm. um, I chose this because I think this they really gel well. Um, oh, the beat goes, mm-hmm. and we'll just go over a couple. Uh, just a couple, couple bars. I'll start with uh, Nick Grant. Nick Grant, a favorite of mine. I know which bar you were talking about. I got it. Was never rich, but dropping gems to poor souls. Tap a supermodel. She bound to need Morse code. Screaming with my head in her box. It ain't a Vogue pose. Stop right there. Give me your uh, philosophical take on these bars and why they hit you so hard. Tap a supermodel. Mm-hmm. She's bound to need Morris Cole. Tap, 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 Yeah. Tap. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, if, and I know that's a little, like, for children now. They probably don't. I mean, I don't know. So, or, or, so, hey. What they're teaching in school now. Right. But if you don't know what Morse code is, look it up. Do your Googles Morse code. M-O-R-S-E. But yeah. for those of us who know what Morse code is... It's yes. dope bars, right? Yes. And then to yeah. say that, you know, screaming with my head in her box is <laughs> not a Vogue pose. I immediately like the did me- this. The metaphoric <laughs> thing of head in a box. Yes. And to choose a Vogue, a Vogue pose. Right. I mean, to me, that line, just that bar right there is yeah. just like. Yes. That's, that's The double entendre Yeah. Um, uh, here on Beat Sneaks and Rhymes, I forgot to tell you, we make up our own words. Entendreness is a word, but go ahead. Said, uh, pay no mind, it's no biggie. But ah. shit, I'm warning you. Mm-hmm. The way I ball gonna make a nigga corny. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm saying. sorry. Pay no mind, no, it's no biggie. But shit, I'm warning you. Yeah. I mean, of course, we all can put that together. Biggie, yes. no Rest in peace, But small things, small lines like the way I ball. Mm-hmm. The way I ball. Is going to make a nigga cornea. Right. So, like, the whole eyeball mm-hmm. cornea. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But eyeball, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like pimping. Right. Up. Brush it. To... You know it's, what I mean? It's a, it's, a good, it's a good bar. Yes. It is it a is. good bar. It is simple, but not quite simple. So, yeah. Shout out to Nick Grant, man. He's, yes. um, he's definitely doing his thing out here. He's um he's a, a really good um, representative for the culture. It is. Um, yes. I think that he appeals to his his demographic and to our demographic. You know, yes. um, he may, he gives us a, a nostalgic feel, mm-hmm. but he also stays very current, and we can appreciate his level of mm-hmm. you know being current and his appreciation. Yes. For. A skill and, and mm-hmm. the culture and, and the you can culture tell. and the OGs. You, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, to be on a song with Royce the Five Nine. I mean, and Elzai. I mean, come and on. Elzai. So Elzai says, <laughs> "The shit I write to make you ball up your fist to fight and take off on a nigga, make him think that he missed his flight. So you short and ignore me. Then I can trade lines with Scorpion or pretend I'm not Kovorkian, just his dorky twin." Stop right there. So, <laughs> Stop right there. Stop. let's talk about that. First of all, what I love so much about Elzai is that just all three of them, Royce, you know, Nick, but sp- specifically Elzai in this, on this song is mm-hmm. that, you know, we're, we're in 2019, we're past the point of people not recognizing rappers as poets, right? Mm-hmm. They are absolutely poets mm-hmm. and they use a lot of poetic literary devices us uh, you know that you would see a regular poet laureate use yes. you know he uses a lot of alliteration he uses a lot of imagery symbolism um onomatopoeia like all of those things mm-hmm. that you learn about in english class he uses those things and this is a prime example 
you know, the alliteration of Scorpion, Kevorkian, Dorky Twin. Yes. It's and it's not the first time that, you know, I'll probably say this, but, you know, I, I know some people think that rap is easy. <laughs> and it's and it's like to, to be able to put a, a thought and make it rhyme yeah. and for it to phonetically be on beat yes. and broken up the way it is mm -hmm. by syllables and for it to be clever yes. as it is and witty. You know what I'm saying? And you clear. have all these elements. And clear. And clear. Yes. All these elements put into a, a, a verse mm -hmm. and, you know. And sometimes it'll be just, it'll be put into like two or three bars, all of that. Yes. And this is, again, a prime example. So yes. let's break that down. Where were we? Uh, uh, I take off on a nigga to make him think he missed his flight. So you thought, so you shouldn't ignore me then and I can trade lines with Scorpion? Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody knows, like, Mortal Kombat and Scorpion and yeah. his... Well, not everyone. Not but everyone, but those of he, us who know. He throws his... He throws, uh... His line. Uh, yeah, his line. <laughs> <laughs> get over here. Exactly. But and then, and then say, has a line when he throws it and says, get over here. So, for him to yeah. say he can trade lines with Scorpion, mm -hmm. um, or pretend I'm not Kevorkian, just his dorky twin. Right. I mean, I know... and. If you don't know who Dr. Kevorkian is, then you have to, you definitely have to Google Dr. Kevorkian. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're but, definitely not here to um, yeah, uh, give you all that information. But um, but yeah, it's it's such a dope to convince you that I'm not him, but just his dorky twin. Right, and the fact that he would say dorky twin. <laughs> exactly. Right, not twin, but dorky twin. His dorky twin. Right. It rhymes with Kevorkian. It, 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 it not only does it rhyme with Kevorkian, but it kind of suits El's eye and, and mm -hmm. how he sees the world and how he thinks. No doubt. No it's, doubt. It's really good. It's it's such a good song. I play this a lot. And, I, you know, uh, you actually put me on to uh, the Bar Exam series. Yes. Um, and I started with four. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, obviously I've worked my way backwards. But this is this is definitely a song that gets heavy rotation. Yes. Uh, it gets play in my ride. Um, All the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A la Menace to Society. So, shouts out to Royce the Five Nine for making sure that he, you know, um, put these other two dope MCs. And that's a, another thing that I love about him is that he keeps his finger on the pulse and he knows who to do songs with and mm -hmm. how to match them up. He has a very good ear for that. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't really seen him match himself up or jump on a song with somebody and it didn't really work. Well, I like the way he bridges the gap with skill. Yes. Because he's not going to get. Uh, yes, he's, uh, too many skillless artists <laughs> skillless, to, to be yes. on a on a song. On a like, song, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And mm -hmm. it's dope, you know, yeah. that he does that. Yeah, we appreciate. And that's that. not the, you know, it's, he's been on quite a few. We well, had a, quite a few songs with artists. Yes, you know, bridging the gap. But um, <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Still so, waiting. Still waiting. Bar exam for Royce the Five Nine. Salute to those MCs. Um, and that concludes our very first episode of Beats, Sneaks, and, and Rhymes. I'm Simone Arabia. I'm Fever. Peace. Subscribe. Hope Please. you like. Yes. Subscription. Subscription. Down. At the bottom. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, and we'll see you soon. To tell a friend to tell a friend <laughs> to not tell a friend. <laughs> Don't tell him to work you nor his dorky twin. But unless you're not the work. Peace. Peace.